My name is Dr. Jackie Gong. I am a fourth year OBGYN resident at Southern Illinois University in Springfield, Illinois. Today, we will talk about a new way to teach residents regarding topics in pediatric adolescent gynecology. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy. The purpose of this video is to address the findings in a study published in 2018 which suggests a significant deficiency in self-reported knowledge of core pediatric and adolescent gynecology topics among various trainees. Additionally, pediatric and adolescent gynecology topics are listed as part of the core educational objectives per CREOG. To address this need, we have created a pediatric model for vaginoscopy for use in case-based simulations. Part one of making the vaginoscopy model is to make the silicone models of the external genitalia, vagina, cervix, and hymen. This slide is a comprehensive list of the materials needed to make the silicone models. Our surgical simulation specialists were integral in helping to make these models. Once your model is made, it can be reused multiple times. These pictures are of the completed external genitalia model. In order to make the silicone models of the external genitalia, we employ the talents of our colleagues at our skills lab. I will give a brief overview of the steps for making these silicone models, as well as show a video of Jenny, one of our surgical skills specialists, making the models. If you would like a more detailed step-by-step -step description, please pause the video and take a screenshot of the directions. First, a clay sculpture of the labia majora and minora were made. Next, the silicone mold was made. The silicone mold is made in layers for extra durability. Then, plaster cast is added to the mold for additional support. The silicone molds of the labia majora and minora are then glued together using silicone glue. After the silicone model of the external genitalia is finished, the second step is to make a silicone model of the vagina. We did this by using a 20cc syringe as the mold and covering the barrel of it with silicone. Additionally, silicone was poured onto the plunger to make a cervix that will fit into the back of the silicone vagina. Next, a silicone model of different hymen variations was made by pouring silicone onto a flat surface, cutting a circle approximately one half the radius of your labia model, and using a punch biopsy or a clay sculptor to make cutout hymen variations. Here are some examples of the hymen variations. You can leave these instruments out for learners to use during the simulation to make their own hymens. We created several hymenal variations in a ring configuration that allowed us to alternate between perforation variants by rotating the model. Part two is to assemble the vaginoscopy simulation model. Here are the materials you will need to assemble the model. Plastic container tall enough to fit a 20cc syringe, super glue, Velcro tabs, plastic tray, draper bucket, and vaginoscopy supplies such as a flexible scope, camera, IV tubing, and distension fluid. This is how the silicone hymen should sit, sandwiched between the plastic lid and the silicone vulva. Keep in mind that you will need to be in a lab or simulation space that is set up for hysteroscopy. The plastic container should be set on a tray to collect fluid as the model is not completely watertight. Additionally, a bucket or surgical drape should be placed underneath the tray to catch fluid. Here, you can see the final model set up, ready for the simulation lab. For our simulation, we discussed a case involving an 8-year-old girl with persistent vaginal discharge for three months. Pediatric gynecologic exam in the office was unremarkable. The next step is to perform vaginoscopy. She is taken to the operating room and placed under sedation. Here, we use the same model with a rigid scope. 
the hysteroscope is set up in the routine fashion. The hysteroscope is then inserted into the vagina, distension fluid is released, and the labia are pinched shut to allow for distension. In the scope view, you are able to see the cause of the patient's vulvovaginitis, a foreign object. The next challenge is for the residents to use operative vaginoscopy techniques to remove the foreign object. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope it allowed you to realize the utility of simulation in resident education and how it can be used to bridge gaps in training. Special thank you to Dr. Erica Nelson, SIU OBGYN Program Director, Jennifer Bartlett, our Surgical Skills Specialist, Alan Garib, and the rest of the SIU OBGYN Research Team and the SIU OBGYN Residents.